Hi, this is a continuation for the lectures in Power Electronics, and today we are going to cover a topic titled Why PWM? We know the PWM, and I think uh, most of you are familiar about the uh, PWM usage and the uh, um, structure of it and how we generate it, but it's a very important and essential thing in Power Electronics, and in this video, I'm going to show you what if we don't have the PWM for our converters or we have it. So if I have a motor or a machine or any other load and I'm, I can supply this motor by a, a power supply, maybe a battery or um, a, another power supply, and I want to run this motor, I really can run it just by um, connecting the terminals of my power supply to the terminals of the machine. But now if I ask you to uh, introduce to me a solution to make me uh, uh, able to change the speed of that, some of you will think about introducing the potentiometer, okay? So the potentiometer here is a variable resistor and that will limit the current going to the motor or the load and also it will drop some voltage okay, across the terminals of the um, uh, resistor, that voltage will make the motor also have less voltage, and then will be, uh, the speed will be less. So now, this is a solution, and yeah, it's cheap, we are able to do it very fast, no problem, I think, with it, but there is something, if we have another machine with higher voltage, higher current, Will this be able really to be a good solution or no? Let's now take some numbers and assess our system. So if I have now the voltage source is supplying now the current and at that moment the current for this machine was 100 milliampere and my potentiometer it was now about 1 kilo ohm. Okay, so I can set it as 1 kilo ohm or less uh, if I just change the setting for this potentiometer. So if I ask what is the power dissipated now across this resistor, okay, or what is the power delivered to the motor? So now let's talk about the resistor and see if it's really dissipating lots of power. So the power dissipation equals the 100 milliampere square because it's I square R, the power I square R. So the I square, which is uh, going through the potentiometer and also the motor is 100 milliampere square times the value of the resistor which is 1 kilo and this is 10 watt. I think 10 watt is not too much. I can really get some resistors but not small by the way. The small one is 1, 2 watt as a maximum. 10 watt I have to get one which is a little bit uh, bulky, okay? And yeah, maybe I can get a slider one or linear one to change. Yeah, okay, it's doable, no problem. But look at that. I will waste 10 watt with a resistor that size, okay, just to deliver 100 milliamp to the load. Now, if I change the resistance now to another setting like 100, 100 ohm, just because I am not happy with this 10 watt, okay, and I want to change that one kilo to less than one kilo, replacing the resistance, okay? Yeah, I can change the voltage still, okay? But I just want to change the resistance to lower one. The, maybe at that moment as well, if, if, if I'm supplying 100 milliamp, so 100 milliamp squared times the 100 ohm, for example, if, I, if it's even replaced by this, okay? So it will be one watt, which is okay, and it's solution, no problem with that, and yeah, it's doable, but if I have different scenario now with a different machine, if that now machine is replaced with another machine which consumes one ampere, okay? So that one ampere now squared times the 100 ohm, it will be 100 watt, 100 watt dissipated across 100 ohm resistor. I want a resistor like that. Look at the size, okay? So to be honest, this solution is not useful, wasting lots of power, and also sizey, okay, or bulky, and 
we are delivering power less than what is lost as heat by the resistor. So that solution was a solution for ancient ages, okay? But now we can't actually use it because of the low efficiency capability. But now maybe some of you will think in another way. We know the resistance and we use this resistance to change that the value and then the voltage drop and then I can deliver variable power or voltage to the load, okay? So why I don't change this resistor and in, instead of rotating it by my hand, I can change it by another component which I can control by current, okay? And also it can drop variable voltage across its terminal. So I don't need actually to rotate it by my hand. What is that component? It's the transistor. And we know the transistor also can work like variable resistor. Look at this schematic here. We have voltage source. We have this load, which, which represents the motor in our previous slide. And we have here, instead of that variable resistor, I'm now introducing the transistor. That transistor can drop different values of voltages across its terminals, collector to emitter, according to the supplied I base, okay? So if I have here different uh, current, base current, I can really control the voltage between the uh, uh, collector and emitter because I can control the current going through that load, okay? So now this transistor can really work like variable resistor, exactly like that. But instead of changing it mechanically by my hand, I can change that voltage drop across that transistor by sitting of I base, okay? So now we have the voltage source and load and now variable resistor that's done, okay, by, by a transistor. Now this transistor, if I supply continuous I base here, okay, that continuous I base will make here IC and that IC also will drop some voltage across this, full, uh, across this load and the remaining voltage will be dropped across this transistor. This position now, or this topology, or this system is called linear operation, okay? I am putting the transistor in its linear region. We know there are three regions of the transistor, cutoff and saturation, and also linear, which is between the cutoff and saturation, okay? If I supply now a moderate current of I base, I can really make the VCE not in the cutoff region and not in the saturation region, but I can just put it in the linear region, okay? And that's called linear operation. Now, in the linear operation, I can really supply some I base, but what about the voltage across the transistor here? If this I base is zero, that means my transistor is cut off. And when it's cut off, okay, that means my voltage here will not supply any current because there is no path to the ground. It's cut by the transistor. And that current will not, because it's zero, will not make the resistor to drop any voltage because this voltage here is IR equals IR. I delivered through this path is zero, so there is no voltage drop here, okay? So this 100 volt here will go, 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 will not drop anything here because there is no voltage and will wait uh, at this point. Waiting at this point, if I just measure between that point and that point, what is VCE, okay? I will see the 100 volt, okay? So in the cutoff region, my transistor will have across its terminals a hundred volt. Okay. Now let's go to the other way, which is saturation. If I supply enough or sufficient I base to go through the linear region and then to go the saturation and I saturated. Okay. In the saturation, the collector and emitter has very, very, very small voltage between them, or sometimes it very it can be ideally zero. So I have here like short circuit between the collector and emitter because I saturated. 
And once I saturate the transistor, the collector and emitter can go like this and be like a short circuit, okay? So the voltage across uh, the terminals VCE, it will be zero when IB is very high, okay? Now, if I draw a line between VCE, this value and VCE, that value, which is zero and 100, this is called now the load line or the linear line, okay? This point has come as a result of cut off. This point has come as a result of saturation and all that is the linear region, okay? Now the VCE can, can change from the zero point here to the 100 voltage, okay? And that's why we have this line, okay? If I now want to set the voltage across this load to be, for example, 50 volt, okay? That means I have to drop here 50 volt across this VCE and then drop 50 volt here, okay? Because this is 100 volt, okay? So now if I increase the voltage across the transistor, the voltage across the resistor will decrease. And if I decrease the transistor voltage across it, okay, the voltage across the load will increase and the relation will be like this. So now if I cut off this transistor, okay, there is no current, the voltage for the VCE across this point to this point, okay, it will be 100 volt, but across the load, because there is no current, so the voltage is zero. And the opposite here, if the current here is passing without any, any drop here, if the voltage drop here is zero, so the voltage here will be the total 100, which is this point, okay? So the load and VCE are opposite to each other. Now the question, if I want 50 volt across my motor or my load, how I set it, I will search for the point of IB, I base. Now this IB, generate voltage across the load to be zero and this IB generate voltage across the load to be 100 volt I want 50 so I will adjust my settings here to enable IB to get 50 volt exactly across my load okay and now I am where here I am in the linear region where my transistor drop 50 volt and my load also drops 50 volt. If I want like 60, 40 or 10, 90, I also can move this I base right and left until I reach the settings that I want. But remember, all that is the linear region. And what I mean by linear region, the transistor is not saturated and the voltage is not zero across it or not uh, cut off and the current is zero. No, it's in the linear region where the voltage across the terminals is 50 volt and also the current here will have some value. And the concern here is how much power is dissipated by this transistor. If it's too much, I have to think about heat sink or a fan or it might damage it so I have to replace it. So that's why we have to link it straight away to the power dissipation. To calculate the power dissipation, now we have, for example, I said 100 voltage here. We have 50 volt across this load and 50 volt across this transistor. And because we have 50 volt across this load, okay, and its value is 5 ohm, so I can calculate the current going from the Vs to the load and then the same current will go through the transistor. Now the IC going through all these components now, 50 volt, which is across the resistor, divided by five ohm, which is now 10 ampere. So the 10 ampere will go through this path and that 10 ampere also will go that, through the transistor and the transistor is already dropping 50 volt. So if there is a component, forget transistor or any other component, has across its terminal some voltage and going through it some current. So the power dissipated by this component or this transistor now is the voltage across its terminals 
times the current, which is VCE times IC. And because VCE now is 50 volt, because this is 50 and this is another 50, and IC is 10 ampere, I think you can calculate the dissipated power, which is 500 watt. 500 watt is a lot, is a way a lot, okay? And it, you will never find a transistor that can dissipate 500 watt, okay? So you have to make parallel transistors with a large heat sink, with a lots of consideration to make this successful. So this solution is really very critical and bring a lots of concern. So what is the solution for this and how to avoid making our transistor works in the linear region this is what we're gonna cover in the next video